Hey guys, Peru here to do an EP review today. I'm here to tell you about the latest from Nether Sedek, the Serapium, out November 20th, independently. This EP has four tracks, 22 minutes in length, and it's been six years since he released the Malefic Chapter 3. He's currently working on a full-length album that will come out in the first half of 2021. So you can look at this EP as an appetizer for the full-length album that's coming out next year. This is also a release deeply driven by his background, Egypt, by the culture, by everything that that culture has to give. I was expecting it to be influenced by it because that's who he is as a person and who he is as an artist. I was just not expecting it to be driven as deeply as it was on these four songs. You can feel it in the lyrics, uh, in the song titles, in the structure, in the sound, and in the atmosphere. Speaking of songs, let's get started with the four tracks, starting off with the Serapeum, Black Osiris. There's two versions of this song, Black Osiris and Polluted Waters. Black Osiris is the first one on the EP, and I really like the darkness, the undertone that it has. This is not just a brutal death metal song. This is a brutal death metal song that has some black metal influences, specifically in the vocals, really creating this dark undertone, this dark atmosphere to how this song comes across. Very dynamic track, both vocally and musically. There's a lot of changes as a track that keeps moving, evolving, and growing as you progress through it. The strength of this track, as far as the heaviness is concerned, is definitely with the drums. The drums create the perfect bass line, the perfect foundation for how the rest of the song comes across. The guitars, perhaps a little bit more diverse, a little bit more technical, adding a little bit of more melody to how the song comes across. Still being heavy at times, but definitely the heaviness, uh, as far as consistency is concerned, is coming from the drums. But there's a lot of different elements, there's a lot of changes, there's a lot of growth, there, there's a lot of movement as you progress through this track, giving this song some diversity of approach, like I said, both musically and vocally, because vocally this is not a one-size-fits-all track. There's a lot of changes happening, and all of those changes allow the song to be very fluid and very dynamic with that black undertone to it. Next, Re-Sarcophagus. This is a vocal interlude that connects the two tracks. It connects the Serapium Black Osiris and the Serapium Polluted Waters. I like it in the place that it is there because it merges these two songs perfectly and allows them to come together and at the same time allows them to be different. So this interlude is in the perfect spot, the perfect duration and the perfect approach in order to really merge these two uh, similar yet different songs. The Serapin Polluted Waters is the third track. It's a more somber, more atmospheric uh, definitely more Arabian driven style song, at least how it opens. The atmosphere of this song as it starts, it's completely different from Black Osiris. It has a completely different feel. It takes longer to get there. It's a song that simmers for a very long time that has an extended intro to it. Once it gets going, it gets going, but it still feels different at times. It's not like it just has a different intro. It's a song that, from an atmospheric perspective, feels a lot different. It feels muddied at times, but it feels a lot more driven as well. It has less changes. It's not as dynamic. It's more driven. It's more straightforward, but at the same time, it's more embellished. It's more crafted. It's a song that has a lot more elements to it as it starts, as it progresses, and as it finishes. So it has a lot of similarities to Black Osiris, but at the same time it feels like a completely different track on its own with a different atmosphere, with a different soundscape. Last but not least, the Serapium Black Osiris recorded live in Lisbon. I'm not a huge fan of this song. I could have lived without it. I honestly, honestly, I would like to see a different kind of track in its place because I didn't feel like it added anything to the overall EP. It was cool, it was interesting to see this song being performed live, but live it did not capture the essence that I got listening to the studio version. So it felt out of place from that perspective. It felt like it was lacking something. It's not as strong, it's not as driven, it's not as deep, it's not as dynamic, it's not as fluid as the studio counterpart. You lose something in a live recording, and this is not a, an outstanding live recording. So I could have lived without this song. I would have liked to see something else in its place, a different track, uh, uh, something new, something different from the, those two Serapium tracks, even though there is a lot of similarities between them. They are different. Uh, I would like to see something in its place because I just didn't feel like this was the perfect closing to this EP. I understand why it's there. It was the first and only time that this song was re was played live. So from that perspective, and when you have an album that's all about this one song, 
being performed in different ways, I understand why it's there. It, it makes sense from that overall big picture perspective. I just didn't feel like it really added value to the overall release. It's interesting, it's cool, but it didn't really add value, at least in my perspective. This is it, guys. Another Sadek with Serapeum out November 20th independently. Let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. I'll be reading those and getting back to you. Take care, guys.